this video will look at iCloud and how to set it up and use it on your iPad as well as on all your other devices. To do that you go to settings and then select iCloud and you need to turn it on. So you need to sign in with your Apple ID and password. So before we, we go any further, just an explanation about what iCloud is. Uh, do you need it? Simply put, the term cloud is used to describe information that is not stored on your computer, and, but it's on a remote computer or a server that's connected via the internet. Having your files, your photos, your apps, your settings, your music, bookmarks and more backed up and available over the internet, wherever you are, whenever you need them, is very useful. You don't have to physically plug in your device and sync it to the computer. So say you're at a friend's house and they recommend a great song which you download on your phone. It'll automatically download to your iMac at your office, your iPad at home, your Windows PC in your bedroom, storing your important files in a remote location using iCloud also gives you a disaster recovery solution just in case your other backup methods fail like an external hard drive for example. The idea behind iCloud is to be able to access all your stuff no matter what Apple device or Windows device you're using. To configure it you need to sign in with your Apple ID and if you don't have an Apple ID then you can create a free one and once you've done that you're presented with some, some um, choices about what you actually want to store in iCloud and we'll go through that shortly. But also if you if you now go to settings, iTunes and App Store, you can also turn on automatic downloads. So if you are on your iPad and you buy an app, if you have automatic downloads switched on, then that information is synchronized to your iCloud account. The next time you turn on your Mac computer, PC computer, anything that's running iCloud, that app will be downloaded to that device also. So it's a useful way of ensuring that everything you buy or purchase is available on every device that you have. Uh, what you also need to do after that is to set it up on your actual computer. So you've set it up on your iPad. The rest of this, this video will talk about actually how to set it up on your iPad. Before you do that, once you've configured it, you've opened it, you've set it up on your iPad, you also have to set it up on your other devices, so on your Mac computers, on um, a MacBook, an iMac, a MacBook Air, and on a Windows computer. And uh, It's pretty simple. On a Mac, all you do is go into the system preferences. There is an iCloud pane, so you tap, uh, click that and uh, sign in to your iCloud account and indicate with the tick mark which uh, elements you want to have synchronized. Then you also go into iTunes and you enable the photo stream. If you're using iPhoto or Aperture, you need to enable photo stream so that every photo that's taken on an iPad using the camera or any other device that's running iCloud, that photo will be streamed to all other devices quite quickly. Uh, in iTunes, in the preferences under store, you also have to turn on automatic downloads so that you are synchronizing everything you buy is available on every other device that you use. If you've got a Windows computer, iCloud works with Windows PC as long as you're using Windows 7 or Vista. And here's the, uh, the, the link to download the control panel for iCloud, which you would then need to install in the normal way. What it gives you once you run it is this screen here, which is similar to the Mac, which will give you the ability to sign into your iCloud account, uh, indicate what you want synchronized, turn on your photo stream. It gives you options. So everything that you can configure with iCloud is available through that pane. And again, go into to iTunes and enable automatic downloads. Now the, uh, the rest of the video will take a closer look at actually how to set up iCloud on your iPad you'll be presented with a series of options about how you want data and information on your iPad to be synchronized into iCloud and then down into other devices you might have. So other computers, Windows computers, Macs computers or uh, iPhones 
or iPod touches. So let's look at them one by one. Uh, mail, if you have mail, mail will come turned off. And because I, I have iCloud already set up, some of this is already set up, so um, I can't sort of show it from scratch. But mail will come turned off. When you turn mail on, what you will get is a new email address, an iCloud email address. And you can set that up in your mail app. You can set that up in any other mail uh, applications that you might use. And all the mail that you send with that account is synchronized up to iCloud. The account, you go into your account, and the uh, account is your, your Apple ID account here but when I go into that I can see my email address first of all it gives me my iCloud account information so if I had multiple iCloud accounts I would have to change the the settings there so if I had another Apple ID and I wanted to use that account for my iCloud account that's where I would put in those details and give it a description uh, the mail is at the bottom so I, I now have an, an a iCloud email address which is that one and if I go into that and look at the settings for that uh, I can have the name of the account and the email address and uh, if I go into here because I was on mobile me I've still got that that account hanging around which I no longer use so I would just, just stick with the default of sending any email from my iCloud account from my iCloud address and the same with sending I'm, I'm only sending from from uh, iCloud.com with a turn off dot me. I don't want to use it anymore. Uh, there are some number of settings here, so you can archive your messages if you have any any that you send with iCloud uh, email. Archive them, save them in your archive folder, and you'll find that folder when you go online on the computer into iCloud.com. In the advanced setting, you can uh, look at how you want your mailboxes to behave. So with deleted uh, messages. Uh, what do you want to be done with them? Go into the trash. Um, so in this case, that's what's happening. All deleted messages are going into the trash. And uh, the drafts, where do you want the drafts to be kept? So there's a few things you can set up with the mail account and done when you've finished that. iCloud gives you some storage, five gigabytes free storage. So if you have no computer and you want to back up your iCloud, you can back it up to iCloud for free. If you have more than five gigabytes of data, movies, songs, whatever it is, and it's more than five, then you will have to purchase more storage. And let's put the password in there. So purchase. And that requires me to put in all my credit card details to actually buy more storage. Now the actual storage that you can have under storage and backup. Change the storage plan. And they're the, 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 the costs for using iCloud storage. Quite expensive, I think. There are other methods that are a bit more cheaper than this. But if you had a 64 gigabyte iPad um, and it's full, then you're not going to be able to fill it all up even on 50 gigabytes. And $105 a year is quite expensive. But you can buy more storage. If you're just backing up your normal mail, your, your notes, your uh, bookmarks, then you're not going to use your 5 gig up. My storage in iCloud, I have 5 gigabytes of storage. I still have 4.2 gigabyte available. And what have I actually got up there? Because I didn't want to back up my iPad to iCloud. I have a phone which is backed up to iCloud. My iPad has zero kilobytes because it is backed up to my computer. And I have some mail messages which are also backed up. I don't know how that happened. Um, we'll go back to the settings and look at uh, some of the other ones. Contacts. If you use the Contacts app in your iPad, then you can choose to have that turned on and synchronized to the contacts that are stored in iCloud. So that every time you change a contact on one device, that change will be synchronized and pushed through to all your other devices. So if I 
have a look at how that might happen on iCloud. So if we go to a browser and iCloud.com is the address, you need to sign in with your Apple ID and this is your iCloud account in the cloud on the web. And there are a number of, of apps there that link with your iCloud on your iPad. So if I was to go into contacts and delete a contact. So we'll just pick somebody who I no longer need to see. I'm going to delete this contact. Then on my iPad, just going back into contacts on my iPad. So I can try and look at both of these. So the one on the, the right is the iPad contacts and the one on the left, uh, no, it's the other way around. The one on the right is the iPad, uh, the iCloud, and the one on the left is the iPad. So here's the, the same person there on the iPad. Let's move it up a bit. That's the, the, the contact on the iPad. This is the contact on the contacts app in the cloud. Now I'm going to delete the one on the cloud by just hitting the delete button and deleting that contact and then you watch the one on the left as soon as I do it it will disappear it takes a second that's gone so effectively what I've done is on the computer I've deleted a contact off my contacts app I can go back to the to the apps here and as soon as I did that, within a couple of seconds, this one is the iPad contacts app, and that's also now gone. Go back to the home screen on the iPad. Now you can do the same with calendar. There's the calendar in iCloud.com current month. So if I go here onto the iPad's calendar and open it on the iPad, so there's the iPad calendar on the left and the iCloud in the sky, in the cloud, on the right, and add a new event. Move that over and add a new event to today. So let's just call it test event. And it will be all day, and it's going into my home calendar. So as soon as I push OK on here, then you watch the one over here because within a couple of seconds that event will immediately appear on the iPad. So it's OK here. Test event is now on the calendar in the cloud. And we're just waiting for it to appear, to synchronize. There it is, it's happened. It only takes a couple of seconds. So on the iPad now, that calendar has been synchronized. And if you've got multiple devices, so you've got a phone, you've got a, a, a couple of computers, you've got an iPad, everything all works together. That is quite powerful and so useful. Go back to iCloud. Um, it will do the same with notes. So I can create a note on the notes app in iCloud.com. And then on my iPad, we'll go back to the iPad and find the notes app. Here's the Notes app on the iPad with only one note in it at the moment. So on the computer one, I'm going to create a new note. Great typing skills, a new note. And that's all I'm going to say. And go back to the cloud. So I've created a new note. And within a couple of seconds, there's the new note in the notes app on the iPad. So it does it does this for notes, for the calendar, for contacts, for reminders. So there's a reminders app on the on the iPad. You can also create reminders on go shopping or pick up pick up the kids, whatever it is, and that, that will be also synchronized across all your devices. For the mail, the mail app on iCloud.com is like having your iCloud uh, mail account online. So this is your um, iCloud.com uh, online, so you've got all your, your folders that you need. You can set up VIP, so in here you can actually set up who you want to have 
uh, priority? What may, what senders of, of email do you want to be able to find all the time? And you, you, we'd like to look at it at the mail um, application to, to learn a bit more about that. But that mail there, any, any mail that goes into your iCloud account will immediately be synced back to your mail app on your uh, iPad. The other thing that it has is find my iPhone. So both iCloud.com and on the iPads, and go back to the iPad, there is a new app, which I need to search for because I can't find it, find iPhone, which will find any iDevice that is using iCloud. So there's an app on the actual uh, iPad that will find whatever device I have that's connected to iCloud. So once, once I type in my password, sign in and it's going to find any device where it is and uh, what I can then do is pick a device like my iPhone for example and then I can locate it I can play a sound so if I tap that that's going to send a sound which is the sound you hear is that sound occurring on the phone and it won't uh, Go away till you actually find the phone and turn it off. Or you can erase the phone. So if you've lost it, somebody's stolen it, you can erase it. You can do that with every device. That is available as an app and it comes now with iOS 6. And it's also available on iCloud.com under Find My Phone. Uh, the other one here, iWork. If you had, were to purchase on the iPad iWork, which is Pages, Keynote and Numbers, then you're able to actually store, so if we go back to uh, the actual iPad one, move that over and get rid of that, and back into settings, documents and data, I have that turned off because I don't have any documents that I want to synchronise with iWork. I've got the apps, pages, numbers and keynote but I don't use it enough to actually warrant it, but that will store documents in the cloud for you. If we go back into the, the iCloud settings on the iPad, you can turn on and off all of these different applications. So the ones that I have turned on is, is mail, contacts, calendars, reminders I haven't got turned on, but might be useful. So to turn it on, you just slide it across and that turns on reminders. That will come on onto uh, the iCloud.com as well. So anytime I do a reminder in the Reminders app, that's immediately going to be synchronised with reminders on iCloud.com. Same with bookmarks. Uh, any bookmarks that I now use on Safari on the iPad can be merged into iCloud and any, any bookmarks that I use on any of my other computers in Safari will always be synchronised. So I would say, yes, I'd like to do that. And so anything, any bookmark I do in Safari on the iPad will also appear on Safari in my computer. Now, Windows uses Safari, you can use it, you can download Safari for PCs and Macs use them. So it's, even if you have a Windows PC, this would be useful. Find my iPad, which is what we looked at, you need to turn that on or off. Photo stream is the other one. If you have that turned on, any photo that you take on uh, the iPad will stream to within a couple of seconds any other device that's using iCloud. So it would go to my phone, to my Macs, uh, and then can be imported into whatever photo application I'm using, iPhoto, Aperture, or whatever PC application you might use. Uh, to fully use the mail, you'd need to go into the mail contacts calendar and add a new account. So I've already got my iCloud account Add it in there, but all you need to do is go into Add Accounts, select iCloud, put in your, your ID, Apple ID and password, and click Next, work your way through all the screens, and then eventually you'll end up with an iCloud account, which is here. And then when you go into that iCloud account in Mail, you have the opportunities there to turn on what you'd like synchronised. Uh, and you may as well use it, it's free is an extra email account that you can use. Uh, iCloud works with Windows PCs. It works as long as you're running Windows 7 or Vista as a minimum, and it works on Macs. Uh, 
uh, it is well worth using because when you have multiple devices, uh, or even if you haven't, just the, the fact that you can back up your information to the cloud. So if you lose your iPad or you get a new iPad, as soon as you've logged in with your Apple ID, all your information will be restored and streamed and set up on your new device. It's just common sense.